system has its strong points and it has its arguments, but I'm sorry, you gotta get somebody other than Radler. <laughs> He's just stereotypical. So are you studying a radio station? Is that the deal? I'm making... Good evening. My name is Jeff Brower, and this is the 950 Late Night WNUR News with an editorial by Mark Bayer. In inter international news, Gorbachev has described the current challenge to Moscow's authority in Estonia by, as perestroika, but he also remarked that everything inspired by social reform is not constructive. Well, now it's time for an editorial by Mark Bayer. Current temperatures are 42 at O'Hare, 45 at Midway, and 45 on the lake. Tonight will be cloudy and colder, low of 38, with some rain and possible snow. Tomorrow should be with rain, more possible snow, high of 48. Thanks, I'm Jeff Power for 89.3 WNUR, Evanston, Chicago. The preceding commentary does not represent the views or opinions of W. Hey, Zay, what's wrong here, buddy? Let me try to someone fucked with my cart. I don't believe this. Oh, I don't believe someone. The middle one this. doesn't work. I'm sorry. I should have told you. Uh, wow, it's too late now. <laughs> You're right. You should have told me. Well, nobody told me, so I, I messed up too. Well, I'm gonna go. Okay, have a good time. I'll see you later. Ryan will be in professional. Are you gonna go in the other That's new from Front 242 by request. Welcome to Paradise. Off of their new 12 inch Headhunter. Before that was Colorbox with the instrumental mix of Manic, uh, done by 400 Blows. You can find that on the Funky Alternatives compilation that came out a couple years back. And we started the show off with something new from Voodoo Mothership. Their version of Hoppa's Got a Brand New Pig Bag. Kind of a new pig bag. Um, has one of the original members of the band Pig Mag in it. James Johnstone, who used to play guitar and saxophone in the original Pig Bag, and a uh, real cool version of that. That's out uh, brand new uh, on import 12 inch. Right now it's 1017. You're listening to Club Beat here on WNUR, the new music FM. My name's Dirk. I'm here with Tony and Norman, the severed head. And if you'd like to put in a request, the number to do so is 866-WNUR. Tonight we've got new records from the Acid Angels. We've got the uh, new remix of Nitzer Rebs, Control I'm Here, the SDI mix. Got uh, Erasure out domestically with their new single, Little Respect. New one from Bomb the Bass, a uh, remix of Say a Little Prayer, which uh, is on the album, but it's in a slightly different form. Say a Little Prayer, you might remember, is an old Dionne Warwick song from the 60s. Hope and Kirk, uh, Richard Kirk and Peter Hope. Peter Hope uh, used to be in the band um, The Box, and... Uh, 
Richard Kirk, you probably remember from his work in Carrie Voltaire, has a new 12-inch uh, out Surgeons. A uh, band called Con Can has a really good song out, sounds uh, very much like New Order. Alien Sex Fiend has a new 12-inch out. We've got a test pressing, thanks to my buddy Andy over at Wax Tracks, of the new TGT record, which uh, is Chris and Cozy in Disguise. And thanks to my buddy Phil over at Kaleidoscope Records, one of the big distributors here for the Midwest and the uh, whole country, actually. We have the new remix of Heavenly Bodies Rains on Me. Thanks to uh, Phil there. It's really, really good, and we're going to get to that in a second. Um, one thing I do want to remind you, though, of the giveaways we have tonight. Tonight we'll be giving away tickets for you to see Ministry in concert on December 3rd at the Riviera Nightclub. We're going to be giving away one pair every hour tonight, so four pairs total. And uh, we're also going to be doing that again next week. also have a couple tickets to give away to the Information Society, and maybe we'll give away some tickets to Was Not Was as well. So a lot of really good things all tonight, so uh, make sure you stay with us. Give us a call, like I said, if you have a request. The number, once again, is 866-WNUR. Without further ado, let's get back to the music with that one from Heavenly Bodies. This is the remix of Rains on Me. Music, progressive dance music, a little DOR, dance-oriented rock a little bit of UK house music, and every once in a while an old funk tune or just something bizarre that we toss in for fun. That's basically the format. It's like alternative club music. Full club beat. Well, we wanted a name that would emphasize that it was club music on the radio rather than the standard uh, I mean, other, other radio stations play dance music, but this was specifically oriented as a, a club show on the radio. And so uh, we wanted to have club in the title, and then we figured since we already have street beat on the station, calling it club beat uh, would be a good kind of uh, parallel. So we called it club beat. The first couple of weeks, we didn't have any name. We called it like the Saturday Night Dance Party or something stupid like that. And then uh, Rob Olson, who used to be the Street Beat producer, uh, and I came up with the idea of Club Beat, and it just stuck. Recent this music isn't played in commercial radio stations such as B96, C95, etc. Well, the main reason this kind of music doesn't get played on uh, commercial stations, and it's ironic that this song is playing when you ask me that, because this is getting played on commercial stations is because most of the bands uh, don't have the kind of clout that it takes to push their way onto uh, a big hit radio format. Um, Top 40 Radio, which, which is the format of the stations you name, is driven primarily by sales and by major label clout. And due to the nature of these records, very few of them here in the States uh, go into the Top 40. So they don't really fit the format of a station like a B96 and a C95. And because they're not on big major labels here in the States very often, they're either on independents or they're on foreign labels, there isn't enough political push to get them on the playlist. So, I mean, the main reasons they're not on those stations is because the programmers there are just, uh, they're, they're playing it safe. They don't want to take a risk to put a song on like uh, the music we play unless it's high on the charts or unless someone from a, a major label pushes them to do it. I mean, that's been a mistake. I mean, but they're, the programmer at uh, B96 has said that uh, he'd rather be late than wrong. So, I mean, we were playing Pump Up the Volume in July of 87, and it didn't hit major top 40 radio until January of 88. You know, and, and the main reason is because uh, top 40 radio wasn't interested until it hit the top 40 whereas we were interested in it as soon as it came out because we knew it was going to be a really big song. We thought it was good, so we wanted to play it. themes this music deals with versus top 40 music? Well, a lot of the music we play, but not exclusively, deals with political and sociological things. Uh, bands like Tackhead are very politically aware. Um, there's often a kind of violent edge to the music, uh, either in, in the music or even in the lyrics. Uh, a lot of the songs deal with sexuality and relationships in a very graphic way. 
Um, the, the themes carry, you know, all different types of things. I mean, a lot of the songs arguably don't have a theme, really. They, they really don't uh, have kind of a message to them. They're just about, you know, dancing. Um, but, I mean, a lot of the songs we do play do have a political bent to them. Is WNUR's Club Beat the only source for broadcasting this music? Well, some songs yes, other songs no. Um, a song like this, Art of Noise Kiss, uh, will get played on our station, it'll get played on LUW, it'll get played on B96, C95. Uh, the song right before it, Ministries Nature Love, might get played maybe on XRT's Big Beat maybe on uh, LUW's Dance Party and here. Other songs like, you know, Meat Beats Strapped Down, Meat Beat Manifesto Strapped Down, or uh, The Pick of the Week Tonight, you know, this uh, new record by this group, Concan. The only place you're going to hear records like that is Club Beat. Um, it doesn't have to be that way, but it is. We're mainly the only place that's going to play a lot of the music we, we put on. Uh, I'd say at least 60 to 70 percent of the records we play were the only station playing them on the radio. Uh, and we'll get back to the music, uh, but first of the music you play, where should I go? Why not Sound Warehouse? Well, you don't want to go to Sound Warehouse because they're not going to have 90 percent of the stuff we play. Um, why they don't have it is a, is a more interesting answer, and I'll get to that in a second. But the main stores to check out for the music we play are Wax Tracks. Uh, down on Lincoln in Chicago and uh, Gramophone on Clark down in Chicago. And then to a lesser extent, Pravda, which is right next door to the Cabaret Metro, and uh, the Turntable out in Schaumburg, and then uh, Vintage Final in Evanston for some of the English pop type of things. Uh, you can also find some pretty good, good old stuff on uh, used and cutouts at some of the used record stores downtown. Dr. Wax surprises me all the time with cool stuff. Uh, the record exchange on Belmont has a lot of good records. Uh, even the secondhand tunes on Clark downtown has a lot of good stuff. But the main stores are Gramophone and Wax Track. The reason Sound Warehouse doesn't have it is because uh, mainly you're dealing with imports, you're dealing with low volume, you're dealing with something that you need to have a lot of knowledge about the music to uh, order and to uh, build a clientele. And places like Sound Warehouse or Rose Records or something that deals with a big volume business isn't interested in doing that. Um, places like Gramophone and, and uh, Wax Tracks have the employees that know the music, have the distribution set up that they can get the imports in in a timely fashion. And uh, they have a clientele that's going to go buy them. I mean, you don't want to get stuck with you know a $10 import uh, if no one's going to buy it. So uh, imports, if you're wrong, you get burned for a, a bigger margin because they're more expensive. And uh, like I said, you, you can't rely on big airplay from radio stations or something like that. So when you order records like that, you really have to know what you're doing. And places like Sound Warehouse or something, you know, which is kind of like the Burger King of restaurants, you know, when it comes to record stores, Sound Warehouse is the, the equivalent, I guess. Uh, they don't want to do it kind of music? Well, this kind of music, I mean, there's a whole bunch of different types of music that we play on the show, from, uh, you know, straight hip-hop to UK house music to uh, industrial to uh, English pop, uh, DOR, I mean, all of those came out of different things. Uh, it's hard to say where one particular thing, I guess in terms of the movement rather than the music, it came out of uh, the club scene in New York and to a lesser extent here in Chicago. I mean, I grew up in New York. Uh, I went club hopping when I was young at CBGB's and the Ritz and the Peppermint Lounge and uh, going there and the music I liked and the music I grew up with, uh, I guess had an influence on the kind of music that the show plays. But really, the show right now just reflects my own personal taste. I, I tend to like a lot of different types of music. I like uh, some rap, I like some hip-hop, I like some house, I like uh, whole different types of stuff. And so the show reflects that. But there's not really one particular origin or type thing. I mean, it's not like I, I based it on one particular club or one particular DJ or one particular type of music. It's basically the idea that club beat should be like listening to the music at a good club 
except it's on the radio. That's the only difference. We try and have a diverse mix and, uh, you know, basically just be like a club on your radio. To be the art of intellectual brains? Yeah, I think so. Sometimes. It's Running the show is definitely the art of intellectual brains. I, I'd say that. I mean, that's that's an easier question. Uh, I don't know. I think I think some of the bands have a lot to say. I think some of the bands don't have a lot to say, but say what little they do very well, and and that's arguably uh, intellectual in a sense. What? For this much, this music. There's a humongous market for this music. Really big market. Uh, I think all you have to do is just look at some of the big dance hits of the last year, year and a half, pump up the volume, beat this, uh, theme from S Express, to see that there is a, a big market for this type of music. There's uh, already a big following in the clubs. Um, there are several stores that uh, if their primary source of income isn't this type of music, it definitely is a, a major source. Um, and they're doing real well. Places like Wax Tracks, Gramophone. Um, I think I think the demand is there, the market is there, and that's what struck me so weird when I looked at the radio and saw that there was really no venue for this type of music on the radio. And that's one of the main reasons I started this show because I thought there there was a market, and it seems to me that a lot of people are realizing it. And you, you see bands like the Pesh Mode and ministry and new order and everything really breaking out and getting very popular in the mainstream because of it. So there definitely is a market. All it takes is a little savvy and a little risk taking and someone could really clean up. Purpose. A cart is kind of like a, a self queuing cassette. Um, its main benefit is it's recordable so you can put anything you want on it. And because it's self queuing you take a lot of the danger of mistakes out of the hands of the DJ. All he or she has to do is just hit a button and uh, it plays. It resembles an 8-track uh, cassette and you just shove it in the machine and then you just have two buttons, start and stop. It's real easy for anybody to understand. Um, big commercial stations often put all their music on carts so that uh, DJs don't have to worry about records and putting it on the wrong speed or playing the wrong songs or having the turntable skip or anything. It's uh, just a very simple type thing to use. And some stations, like The Wave or something, have all their music on carts and have little robot systems to play it off. They don't even need a DJ. Right now, our sponsors are Wax Tracks Records, Gramophone Records, Pravda Records, and Turntable Records. Um, in the past, we've had uh, Eduardo's Pizza, Carmen's Pizza, uh, m and Movie Theaters, um, Cabaret Metro is still a sponsor, but the Metro in the past. Uh, Neo's been a sponsor, Bedrock is currently a sponsor. Comes and goes. Subway was a sponsor for a while. Who knows? Maybe our next sponsor will be Old Style. You got the record, and the record has grooves. And the needle on the turntable bumps these grooves. It just hops over them, and it makes music. And the music runs down the needle through the turntable and hops into the mixing board. From the mixing board, it gets sent to the remote control for the transmitter which throws it to the transmitter. The transmitter then starts vibrating the air and all these sound waves of what we're playing start sweeping across the countryside. And uh, here you are at home, you got your stereo on and it vibrates through the air and it hits your antenna and your antenna starts to vibrate and the vibrations go down your antenna into your stereo and your stereo starts to vibrate and your speakers start vibrating and music starts vibrating through the air and hits your ears and you hear music because your brain starts vibrating inside your head and that's why sometimes if you're listening to loud music you'll see people go like this because they're trying to stop the vibrations from getting inside their ears because if the vibrations don't get into your ears they don't get to your brain to jiggle your brain and it doesn't seem as loud 
And that's why also if you touch like a stereo or something, you can feel it like moving. Because it's, it's getting those vibrations. And that's where the expression good vibes came from. Compiling a playlist is a very involved process. And uh, most people who compile a playlist have studied advanced accounting and business. Um, what happens is you take a listing of all the songs you've played, you uh, put them in order, you check off how many times you've played them in a set period of time. For example, we do monthly playlists, so how many times that month we've played each song. You then rank them in order, the most played to the least played, uh, with all the essential information, the name of the band, the name of the song, where it's from, the label, and uh, you type that boy out, and uh, that's your playlist. Shrill and Bob. Every hour on the hour. Why? Because it's the law. We don't like to break the law. Sometimes we bend it, but we don't like to break it. And we had. Right before that, we had offensive, obscene, or repulsive. And what kind of FCC issues do you deal with or restrict you from playing them? Well, I don't think it's repulsive. Well, this is exciting. Yes, this, this, this is one of, more of the one of the more exciting oh, parts. Oh, we have I've a problem. Hang so on. We, we're gonna scratch Hang on a second. Yeah, sir, definitely. That was. We play as repulsive. Killer. Some may be considered offensive or indecent. By law, we're we're not allowed to play any obscene music. And yeah, we're only supposed to play indecent or offensive music late at night. Um, basically, the FCC has said that you can play music that's indecent or offensive as long as you take pains to make sure children are not in the audience. And that's why they kind of let you get away with it late at night. Right now, after midnight is the time, between midnight and six. But at no time are you allowed to play offensive material. I mean, obscene material. Because obscene is, is against the law. So we don't play any obscene material. In fact, we don't even play that much indecent or offensive material. When we do, we play it late at night. So uh, if you're looking for that indecent material, make sure you listen to our show the, the last couple of hours. The only place you'll probably hear it anywhere is uh, on our show. How do you think listen to this music? Very rich. Very, very rich. If you're an advertiser looking for uh, a show to sponsor, I think our listeners have got to be the, the most rich people in the whole world. Uh, half our listeners, I think, are uh, Arabian sheiks. The other half are movie stars. And uh, a couple captains of industry in there as well. And, you know, uh, a few self-employed entrepreneurs. But uh, very, very wealthy. Very educated. Most of the people have uh, a doctorate um, in, in some high intellectual type uh, course of study. Um, most, of, most of our listeners own two cars, split 50-50 between a, a portion of BMW and uh, a Maserati and uh, a Volvo. So uh, very, very wealthy. Uh, the average club beat listener uh, owns 1.8 turntables spends uh, $300 a week on uh, on meals and uh, close to $1,000 a month on records. So it's a very, very wealthy, very elite, very special type of listener that we attract. Um, very, very uh, high class. Their favorite magazine is probably uh, uh, Millionaire or, or The Face, one or the other. The, the, the basic club listener doesn't drink decaffeinated coffee or diet soda, or light beer. That's that's the clubby listener in, in a nutshell. Propaganda. Well, not not really propaganda in the, the full sense of the word, but we do have what we, we would consider promotional items that uh, might sway the unenlightened. Uh, foremost among these are, are our flyers, which are on the... Uh, Backsides of all our playlists, which uh, are posters of the Club Beat Gorilla Bruno in uh, various situations, and we have one come out every month. And like I said, on one side is our playlist for the month, and on the other side is uh, the flyer uh, with the, the picture of Bruno in, in some kind of uh, 
bizarre situation, death-defying situation when he's listening to Clubby. The first one, we had this kind of Beirut street scene where the buildings were all on fire and people were hanging out of the buildings dead and there were bodies on the ground and bombs were coming in and everything. And there was Bruno the Gorilla dancing in the middle of the street with uh, his stereo on the side of an armored car that had been blown up. Uh, in the second one, we had Bruno back in the States cooling out in his backyard with uh, a tanning shield with his headphones on and just uh, relaxing in his backyard while uh, a bunch of Russian MiGs start bombing the countryside and uh, a Russian tank crunches into his backyard after it's blown up his neighbor's house. And uh, in the future we've got one where Bruno is uh, a technician at a nuclear power plant. We've got one where he's driving off a cliff. We've got uh, one where Bruno is uh, in front of a firing squad. We've got one where he's in an electric chair and all kinds of fun things like that but right now we have a new logo coming out which is kind of propaganda which should uh, inflame all the super patriots here in the United States which is uh, a reworking of the old Uncle Sam recruitment poster where you have Uncle Sam pointing and goes I want you! Uh, we've got Bruno dressed up like Uncle Sam he's got a little goatee beard you know uh, strung up on his chin and he's got the Uncle Sam hat and the Uncle Sam jacket and uh, he's got headphones on, of course, listening to Club B. But instead of just pointing, he's got this big-ass gun. And he's pointing right at your head, and he's saying, Club B wants you. And uh, we've got the American flag all torn up behind him with bullet holes in it and stuff. So That's really the only propaganda we have right now. We, we try and do our propaganda through pictures because we, we take the tact that, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words. So why should I spend a lot of time like writing up this big manifesto? We can just draw a picture. And we're big with slogans. We love slogans. You know, we've got things like, uh, uh, for some people, it's a matter of life and death. Club B, you know. Chicago's club music connection, club B. All these types of things. So. That's our property. So how do you like those new headphones we got here? You'd be digging them, huh? Yeah. Did they have this last week? No. I think so. I'm going to buy them last week. week. I bought them this week. <laughs> Pretty hot. Hey, okay. I thought they were so hot, I went out and bought myself.